Welcome viewers, you are watching Ibila.tv. I am Funsho Oloja. Today on the show we'll be discussing real estate investment in Lagos State. And we have a guest here with us. She's a, real, uh, she's a serial entrepreneur with interest in fashion and real estate sector. Focused and results-oriented professional, her personal philosophy is, a, is to create value and solve problems by empowering minds to, to embrace positive and creative thinking, helping them achieve personal goals by establishing strategic relationships. She is a trained professional with a first degree in marketing and an MBA from the prestigious University of Ife. Also referred to as Lady Realtor, she has over 14 years experience in high profile networking for both public and private sectors, spanning the banking, IT, and real estate industries. Our jewelry line, Still Me Jewelry, supplies quality and stylish items for high end and everyday use to suit the varied pockets of our esteemed clientele. She delivers with exceptional customer service. She is also the Chief Executive Officer, Triacot Properties, a reputable real estate marketing firm in Lagos, Nigeria, that seeks to connect our clients to amazing, affordable, and genuine properties. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Our name is Mrs. Trinita Akpan. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Ma, tell us, what is real estate in Lagos like compared to other states? I like to refer to real estate and I like to refer to Lagos State as the king of real estate. And this is why. Lagos State on its own generates so much IGL. There's so much going on business wise. You have many firms coming into Nigeria and wanting to set up offices in Lagos. You have many entrepreneurs coming into Lagos, people who have lived in different states coming to Lagos. It is believed that Lagos is like the dream of a young man. You find coppers who have served in other states, even a copper living in another state, coming to Lagos to serve. He doesn't want to go back because you find out that so much can happen in Lagos. It's really the business hub of Nigeria as a whole. I dare say if God forbid there's a split in Nigeria. Lagos can stand on its own. Mm. What can you tell us are the factors that determine prices in uh, uh, properties in Lagos State? Uh, there are so many factors. Um, Lagos has been peculiar as it is, as it, or as it is in Nigeria. Um, there are so many factors that can affect the prices. Number one is the location. If you have a property in a highbrow location, definitely the prices will be higher than the property in the, at the lower end of Lagos State. Aside from the location, you also have the infrastructure and facilities that the property or the area has. I give a typical example. If I want to use um, the island, Lagos Island, as my case study, I pick certain estates or certain locations within Lagos Island. Ikoyi, Victoria Island, Nikon Town, Songo Tedu, you find out that there are properties in, two, in pockets of areas that are more expensive. Crown Town, Crown Estate in Songo Tedu has expensive properties, more than Ikota Villa. Nikon Town has more expensive properties than Lucky Face One. I know it's kind of funny to some people, but that is the way it is. Aside from location, aside from infrastructure, you also think of security. People also want to live, these days people want to live within gated communities. Mm -hmm. You find somebody, a young upcoming family who wants to buy a piece of property, who buy a piece of land, and he's thinking of the security of his family. He wouldn't go to, he would he would see him and um, offer you a property in more way or further. He said, no, 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 I want somewhere on the island. I want somewhere that is gated. I want somewhere that has security. Before anybody comes in, you can check. Those things affect the prices of property in Lagos, the location, the infrastructure, the, the security, as well as um, the name of the neighborhood. Okay. So, in, based on your years of experience in the business, what's your best advice to real estate property investors if they are to come to Lagos State? Well, you're coming to Lagos as a property investor, I would say it work strictly with your budget. 
Look out for properties that you can comfortably afford. The mortgage system in Nigeria is not where we want it to be, although we are still improving. So I always advise investors, look out for what you can afford. If you can afford property in a highbrow area, then go ahead. If you can afford property in the middle of coming emerging cities like Songo Tejo, Ibejuleki, then go ahead. But it is very important that your first part of call, your first assignment must be to do your due diligence on the property that you are buying. Be sure of the title of that property. Be sure of the ownership of that property before you buy. Be sure of the security in the area. Another thing to look out for is where is, where is the development going? You want to buy a property that has good appreciation value. So you look at where is development going? Where is the government concentrating on? Where are they moving towards? And then I, I would advise that that would be a good place to buy a property. Because when you're, when you're doing real estate investment, it's not a cash in, cash out. You have to give a, a gestation period, sometimes five years, sometimes 10 years. But you must be careful that you buy a property in a place that has good appreciation value. I give a typical example. We have the emerging cities. Now, I tend to want to always concentrate on the emerging cities because there's so much going on there. It's buzzing all over the news, Ibejuleki, and everything that is going on, the Dangote refinery, the seaport, the new airport, the Fort Mainland Bridge. So much is going on that the government is doing. And because the government is doing so much capital projects there, people who own properties there or people who are buying properties there do stand the chance within the next four years to have over a 100% return on your investment. Interesting. Now, if you are to advise any investor now uh, coming to Lagos and intending to uh, possess a property in Lagos, which of the uh, which of it would you advise they take? Is it they should they go for commercial or residential? Which will it be? Real estate in all ramifications, be it residential or commercial, actually is profitable. It depends on the ladder in which you are in the property investment. On the property investment ladder, it depends on which stage you are in. If you are a beginner, my advice would be start with residential. Why is that? Housing is a basic need for every man. Mm. So everybody wants to have a shelter, wants to be able to own his home. So if you can start with the residential, buy cheap and wait for it to appreciate. If you can afford to buy in highbrow areas, in expensive areas, then look out for properties that are depressed, properties whose, who, whose value have depreciated, maybe an old building. Knock it down, put in some money, renovate, and make over a 150% you know, turnover on it. And that gives you more or less like an immediate return, almost immediate to midterm. But if you're looking for a long-term thing, I would advise start with residential. Then if you are on the mid strata of the property ladder you have one or two pockets of properties here and there land maybe houses maybe you're a landlord it's also advisable that you should go into commercial commercial means office spaces look for a piece of land build plazas give it out for shops give it out for offices people will pay rent of income to you and you spend less on renovation than you would have spent on a residential property so on both ends it's it's prof um, very, very profitable, even on the agricultural aspect of real estate, depending on where you want to play and depending on what you can afford. Real estate all around really is a profitable business. Mm. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you are the CEO of Triacot Properties. Kindly tell our viewers what Triacot Properties is all about. Triacot Properties, we are a real estate marketing firm. Some people would call us matchmakers. We matchmake the buyer with the seller. We matchmake you with the right property. Okay? If it's a home, if your desire is a home, if your desire is to own a property, then that is our business. It's our business to find you a property within your budget. And we, because integrity is one of our major, major, major watchword. It's one of the values that we work strictly with. So we tell our clients that we, this is our promise to you. We lay all cards on the table. We walk you through every single transaction, all step of the way, from the beginning to the end. We just don't leave you hang, um, hang, um, we, we don't leave you hanging. Any customer that walks through our doors always goes back smiling. I dare say that. And um, it's been the grace of God so far. And um, for you who are still thinking, should I, should I not? 
Honestly, trust me, it is a good feeling to own a piece of earth with your name on it. If it's 600 square meter, if it is 300 square meter that you can afford, as long as you've got your name on it, you have a good feeling, some sort of security comes to you. So that's what really what we do. We help people own properties. They're here, people. Now, uh, let's, moving forward, land use charge has been uh, recently uh, reviewed in Lagos State. How does it uh, affect or how will it affect investment, uh, properties, investment in Lagos? In February this year, Lagos State repealed their law and reenacted the land use charge. And what does the land use charge say? Every owner of property must pay a land use charge, the, the, the land use charge, depending on the kind of property that you own. If you own a school, you are exempted. If you own an NGO, you are exempted. Or you are a retiree living in your own house, then you are exempted from paying the land use charge. You own a commercial property, you would pay. You own a residential property that somebody is living in, you would pay. Now, before this, we had the capital gains um, tax. That means for every house or property that is being sold or bought, you must pay capital gains to the government. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has uh, collapsed capital gains and a lot of other charges to make up the land use charge, which means this is almost like double taxation, and that is why real estate investors and um, stakeholders raised their voices against the land use charge. With the mathematics and the calculation that was being done, it was going to be on the high side. The prices of materials in the market are not coming down. But it's not as if the prices of income, it's not as if in the income or wages earned is going up. So when you build a property and the prices of materials, you factor in that cost and you factor in your land use charges, definitely the rental value of your property has to go up. Naturally, the landlords or the owners of this property will cascade that cost to the tenants. Hmm. So ordinarily before, when it was just property owners that were paying such taxes, tenants will not have to pay. And when you were paying 600000 before as your rent, you can expect to pay 800 or a million as the years go by. Okay. Now, recently, or, or from time, uh, not too recently though, the Minister of Housing <laughs> told us uh, that, or told property owner, uh, told individuals, everyone, that they can pay rents in arrears. Now, what impact will this have on real estate pro uh, property or investment in Lagos? That pronouncement has um, brought a lot of mixed feelings. I've been reading the papers, I've been watching the reactions of people. Of course, it brought mixed feelings, and because we are not used to it in Nigeria, the reaction didn't come as a surprise. But if we must look at it critically, that is the practice in other developed countries. You go to the US, you go to the UK, other developed countries, they are paying their rent in arrears. On a monthly basis, at the end of each month, they pay their rent, which is what Fashola was trying to introduce or is trying to introduce to Nigeria. Salaries are being collected at the end of each month. So why do you expect the people who are staying in your house to pay before the month ends? He wants landlords to be able to collect at the end of the month. Now, I think it's something that can work in Nigeria quite sincerely. If due process is put in place, the landlords now have to protect themselves because they are the real estate investors here. Whether you own a commercial property or you own a residential property, you need to protect yourself. And how do you do that? Take certain steps in safeguarding your investments. So you're taking in a tenant who is going to use your property either for office or for rent. There must be a lease agreement clearly stating out the terms and conditions and consequences in cases of defaults. Number one. Number two, try to avoid giving out your property to family and friends. Because they're the ones that will come up with excuses. You're supposed to understand you're my uncle. Um, you know how it is now. They're the ones that come up with excuses. So try to avoid that business is business. Number three, be sure of the person in which you are giving your property to. I would say that is why you have a lot of real estate marketing firms and agencies out there. List your properties with verifiable 
agencies on the website so that whoever is clicking onto the website and looking at your property, they must be able to identify them using number one, their ID card. Number two, ascertain your source of income to be sure that you will not fall behind on your range payment. All of this must be stated also in the lease agreement. Number three, to be sure that you are going to get your money, you can ask the tenant or whoever is going for, for your property, why don't you give me a standing order directly from your bank? If you are an employee, if you are a businessman, a standing order, which before it's changed, the bank owes you an obligation to get back to you to say this man is trying to change his standing order. Okay? Now for an employee, once you have verified his source of income and where he's, where he's working, you can have an agreement also with the employer before to be sure that your rent goes directly to the landlord. Even in the case of if he, if he has to lose his job or he's been laid off for any reason, the employer also would notify the landlord. Those are all the steps that is being done in advanced countries. And I think it can work in Nigeria if, um, if we embrace the idea and um, if we work towards it. It's really geared towards the low income earners and um, the population of Nigeria, quite a number are low income earners or just middle income earners. And um, I think it's something that can work. Wow. That's quite a lot of information. And I believe we all have been duly enlightened. Now, all you need to do is just, hear, from what you have said, you don't need to stress yourself. Don't try to say, okay, I have, uh, I have a little money. I just want to buy a uh, uh, house on Banana Island or somewhere or anywhere without making sure that you are protected or you are capable of, man uh, of uh, managing that property. Well, that will be all we'll be asking her. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having well, me. Well, uh, for those of you at home or those of you viewing us, you can follow, share, and even comment on all our social media platforms at ibile.tv, at I-B-I-L-E D-O-T TV. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll definitely be happy to receive from you. Hear anything, whatever you have to say, share with us. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.